Instantly when I heard that, I just sunk at that point. What did I do? What's up guys? It is me, Jarius, and I am back with another video. So as you guys can see from the title, this video is gonna be a lot, but I think it's a necessary video and it's a conversation that was really therapeutic for me to just come to some certain realizations in my life about things that have happened in the past and all of that good stuff. But before we dive into it and we start unpacking all of this, I need you guys to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that bell. Click the bell. Click the bell. You know you want to be nosy. And follow our social media links down below. With this video, I kind of wanted to have a, a therapy session therapy session with you guys. It's some things that I kind of never really talked about. I've noticed that in one way or another, they have kind of came back and bubbled up and affected me in my adult life. So I thought it would be really awesome to share some of those things with you guys. And hopefully it'll be able to help someone out there, you know, kind of allow me to just like let it go. So today is we gonna let go of all this baggage, okay? First thing, let's go ahead and jump right you guys know that one of the biggest blessings that I've ever received in this life is to be able to be parents to Aubrey, Ashton, and Aria, my three children. And for those of you who are new, Aubrey is our heavenly daughter who watches over us. And then we have Ashton and Aria who's here with us. That's literally one of the biggest blessings in my life, guys. There is no greater joy than being able to parent those little ones. And it's just really an honor that I get to be their dad they're really amazing and i just couldn't imagine imagine life without them but unfortunately i didn't have that growing up my mom obviously as you guys can see has always been there for me and sacrificed so much for me throughout the course of my life so that i can be where i am today but she had to do it by herself my dad was not really around he kind of popped up when he wanted to or when it was convenient for him that really had an effect on me I'm no different because there are so many people in the black community, unfortunately, who don't have their dads and who don't really get to have that father figure in their lives. It truly makes a difference in a lot of people's cases and in mine as well. Who knows what life would have been like if he would have been there, but my man, I'm very thankful that I am where I am today without him. Whew. Yeah. One of the things that I want to let go with my dad is the fact that he wasn't there and the fact that I I felt like I didn't live up to his expectations and that I wasn't good enough. Just to kind of give you guys some backstory. So my dad was really amazing in sports. Like he was a phenomenal basketball player. Like everyone knew who he was. Baseball, you know, everything. Like he literally did everything and he was just really, really amazing. And that was one of the things that made my mom fall in love with him. When he started having children, as we got older, we all started to develop our our athletic talents as well. Particularly my older brother and sister, they got the gene as well and they were phenomenal at basketball. I remember just like watching them, just thinking like, man, I wanna be like that because my dad would be at every game. He would be supporting them, traveling to go see them play, all kind of stuff like that. So when I got of age, I thought it was gonna be the same thing. And as you guys know, I love basketball as well. And I think my skills didn't develop until I was more into my life late teens and adulthood. But I played in middle school, I played in high school as well. I wasn't as good 
as my brother and sister were. For the longest, like I just, I always just, you know, wanted to have that proud moment of me, you know, sh hitting the buzzer beater or like shooting the three or scoring the most points or like being MVP and that unfortunately never came. With my dad, I felt growing up, I was just like always looking for him to like be in the stands, being there to support me. And my mom was always there. Like she would always be screaming and embarrassing me at every game. It just really meant a lot for me to impress him and I never did. Um, I was a very good defensive player, but I wasn't the best offensively and that's where they shine. So I just always just kind of felt like, man, if I can score the most points or if I can do the best trick or I can shake somebody or whatever, he'll actually acknowledge me and be excited about it. And when that never happened, it was just a big letdown. Like it just sucks. And, and I feel bad because saying that I realized that my mom was at every game. She cheered me on. I guess I kind of took that for granted and not everyone has even their mom there to support them. So that's just crazy in itself. In addition to that, just growing up as a child, seeing how my dad loved on his inside kids, meaning the kids that were in his house, it just really affected me. And it made me feel like an outsider. It made me feel like I didn't belong at times. And it's just like, I just really long to have my dad there and to like be there and support me and be proud of me and love on me. And I just didn't get that. And I'll never forget. There was one particular time where I was really excited to go to my dad's house for the weekend. This was when I was in maybe like 10th grade and my sister was out of school at this point and she would come to my games to support me. And one weekend I was like getting ready to go after the game. And I was like, you know, I told my mom like, hey, I'm gonna go stay at my dad's house this weekend. She was like, okay, cool, be careful, blah, blah, blah. And then I get ready to drive back with my sister and she was like, did you call daddy and ask him? And I was like, what I need to call him for? She was like, I think you should because there had been a conversation where her mom actually told my dad that I was showing up too much. Like instantly when I heard that, I just like kind of sunk at that point because it's just like, what did I do? Like I, all I want to do is like belong. All I want to do is like fit in. And I, I guess like I was searching for like that two parent household and I never got it. And I thought that by going to his house and interacting with my mother-in-law that like I kind of felt like it made sense and it was complete to hear her say that like just really kind of crushed my spirit a little bit because my mom always made sure that like I was a respectful child. She made sure that like that I always carried myself in a dignified way and was just a very respectable child. For her to say I'm coming around too much and that I disrespected her, that never happened. Unfortunately, my dad went for it. We definitely cut back on the time that I actually spent over there. And at that point, you know, it was just like, okay. I see how this is gonna go. And then you you go into that where you have to protect yourself and protect your heart, kind of move on from it, but you never really do because it's just like, why do you choose them? What's so different about me? I am the only child that made straight A's. I'm the only child that was involved in all of these positive things at school. Like they weren't doing that. They were good at sports, but they weren't academically excelling. Why aren't you proud of me? Why don't you show up and support me like that? It just really created a lot of resentment and as I got older I don't speak to him at all I can't even tell you guys like the last time I spoke to him I honestly just don't have a desire to but I realized that there is more power in you accepting a situation forgiving someone and letting go so today in front of you guys I choose to no longer cry about the situation I choose to no longer be angry about the situation I'm gonna accept the fact that that's the man that he is he missed out it was nothing that I did. It was nothing that I didn't do. I am perfect the way that I am. I am deserving. I have enough of me to go around to everyone. And you just, you didn't accept it. That's too bad on you, but you never really know what he went through with his dad to cause that cycle. So I forgive him 
for that. I forgive you for not being there. I forgive you for not loving me in the way that I needed. I give myself permission to move on from it. No more tears, no more. So moving on to the next thing. Growing up in my family, on my mom's side, unfortunately, we grew up in a family where if you got into it with somebody or you didn't agree with a family member or whatever and you guys had a big blowout, they said whatever and did whatever to you, you just sweep it under the rug and let it go because that's family. And I don't agree with that. I don't agree with accepting someone treating you a certain type of way just because they're family. My uncles did it where I didn't always get treated the best with them. Unfortunately, I had cousins who talked about me and all of those things and like I just kept forgiving and forgiving and forgiving and trying to fit in and all that stuff and it's just like I feel like a lot of those things that they said to me with your gay ass or just talking about me in whatever way that they did. You with your big teeth, you live in a trailer, or all of that stuff that they said about me growing up that I let affect me. Today, I'm letting it go. I actually haven't even spoken to that particular cousin since before I graduated and have no desire to. And I just realized that at the same time, I'm giving you power because I'm still holding on to it and you live in your life. I forgive you for not understanding me. I forgive you for dogging me and I forgive you for not being a good person. But you know what? Well, look at God. Won't God do it? Amen. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Because look at me now. I'm doing great. I'm blessed and highly favored. And I wish you all the best. And like, literally, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I don't have nothing for you to give you aside from like, I wish you well and I wish your family well and all that stuff. But like, I just, I choose not to accept certain things in my life. And just because you are the way that you are and we are family, then I'm supposed to take it. Mm -mm. I choose to not be involved with certain family members because it just does not fit with my life today. And at the end of the day, I have to live my life and I don't want certain people in it and I shouldn't feel bad just because we're family. I love you from a distance and that's all you can get from me. The last thing that I wanna talk about today, guys, is my friends from high school. I feel like in high school, we all go through so much. You grow up, you change, you learn, and all this stuff. And I really feel like for the longest of time, I tried my best to impress them. And I tried my best to stunt on them because they put me down or talked about me and said things about me. And I couldn't really, at that time, defend myself how I wanted to or in the way that I thought was necessary. And it's just like little stupid things like kids would say, I did grow up in a trailer for 18 years and you know what that's not something that I should be sad to say or be ashamed to say my mom bust her behind and worked two jobs to make sure that I had every single thing that I needed we didn't live in like no big mansion we didn't have a BMW or anything like that growing up but she made sure I had every single thing that I needed and for that I will eternally be grateful there was not a pair of shoes that I couldn't have you know and that's the material things that don't really matter but it's not an activity in school that I couldn't do you know, she made sure I had my first car she made sure when I went to college that I had every single thing that I needed my laptop paid my rent for two or three months like made sure she went in and stocked up my kitchen with groceries everything that I needed she made sure that I had I'm proud of that because as a parent now I know how hard it is to provide your for your kids and to give them the best and, and you just want them to have have everything that you've never had and I just feel like my mom literally did everything for me and like I'm getting emotional on this one because it's just like for the longest of time I was angry because it's just like I'm sitting here getting picked on and it's just like I know we have the money to go and like get an apartment or go get a house or something like that and it's just like she knew what she was doing because if she would have went and got a house like mate who's to say that I wouldn't have been able to get my car who's to say that I wouldn't be able to have the nice clothes that I had or something like that. Like she was smart about what she did and she made sure that I was taken care of on all fronts. I let people make me ashamed of my situation. There's nothing wrong with being in a trailer. It was clean. 
it was nice, you know, like we weren't like dirty people. It's just we lived in a trailer. So what? I let people, even to this day, make me insecure about my smile. People talked about me, oh, your teeth are yellow. Oh, your teeth are big and goofy. They got gaps in them. And it's just like for the longest I carried that around to the point to where like I've perfected my smile to where you don't see my gaps. I've went to extremes with bleaching my teeth to get them white. Just so much like, and even to this day, I still say that as soon as I get enough money, I'm gonna go get me some veneers. I let all of those things that people said about me affect me and it really shouldn't. And people shouldn't have that much power over you. With those things being said to my friends or people that I thought were friends of mine in high school, I let you guys know that I forgive you for the things that you've done and I hope you forgive me because I definitely wasn't an angel either and I hope that you forgive me for the things that I did to you in some type of way to hurt you, make you feel less than. I choose to let go of all the things that does not serve me purpose and I choose to rise above and be better and I hope that you all do the same and I'm glad to see a lot of you on top and winning. Overall guys, I just really wanted to make this video just to kind of give you a little insight to the things that we bring with us from childhood, from school, from your friends and all this stuff and how it can somehow relive and, and you know kind of bubble up into your adulthood and it really does affect you if you don't deal with it. So in some type of way I hope that this inspires you guys to go and, and make a list of what's important to you or what's affecting you and how you can get through it so that you don't let it affect your life today. So hopefully this video has been informative hopefully it's giving you some insight into my background and who i am as a person hopefully you guys like it thank you so much for allowing me to vent and allowing me to get it all off my chest that being said all my baggage done i'm choosing to live my best life thank you guys love you